Um, first of all, we'll welcome our guests. You want to introduce yourself? Uh, Phil Barnes. Thank you. And Kathy <coughs> Grove. Happy to grow. And everybody here. Yeah. Okay, good. Next on the agenda is agenda review and revisions. Are there any revisions to the agenda? Hearing none, public comments and correspondence. I'll just note that I did receive an email from Corinne Stridesburg with some feedback on uh, the website, it's more specifically the um, school board meetings and where they're located, as well as uh, looking for policies to be online. And I forwarded that to Bill and to Aaron and yeah. ask you to just take a look at that and give some feedback on what you think and what might be possible. Do you think it's an appropriate change? Uh, I think it depends on priorities of all the work that we're doing around here, frankly, for the level of change that it's not that much a level of change, but I think that uh, it's back to several conversations we had with everything that we're trying to do. Okay. So I believe I believe that they're duly warned as as needed, but that's my belief. Any other public comments or correspondence? We'll just note for the record here and for the video, future meetings we have on December 5th is an SU board meeting. And December 10th is our regular Berlin school board meeting. On the consent agenda, the uh, approval of the minutes of October 24th, that's on page two of your packet. If everyone's had a chance to take a look at the minutes, I would entertain a motion. I'll make a motion. Second. Okay. Is there any discussion? Those in favor of the motion signify by saying aye. Aye. Those opposed, no. The ayes have it. The minutes are approved. Um, next, we'll go to our discussion agenda. And um, in the interest of accommodating our, our guest, we can move that. Um, I assume, Philip, that you're here for 3.6, the sports recreation program discussion. Yes. We can we can move that up and talk about that, if that's okay with everyone. All right. So we're going to take on 3.6 first here. Uh, we were just looking for some information. And, um, here, you, you had asked for this uh, item to be placed on the agenda. And I was wondering if we could just get, we were, I think the board was wanting to have more information about the um, athletic director position for Berlin. Um, Aaron was kind enough to send along a job description. And uh, extra copies. And you made some copies of that. And I think we're at this point, we're just looking to gather some information because there is a possibility of joining a recreation program. So yeah, the conversation is asking about um, East Coast players are already on a rec program, and Philip can speak a little more to exactly what that looks like at East Coast player. Um, but so I think some of um, the struggle that we we have always had um, with the sports program is every school runs a little differently whether it's rules, field size, full size. Some schools have consistent refs, some don't, some it's just literally pulling somebody off the sidelines, and it always causes issues every year. And there definitely was some of that this year with um, the whole gamut of all those things that I spoke to. Um, there are also for a lot of scheduling changes, and I can speak for Mike Noyes that his three, four girls program were affected probably the most where they showed up for games, there was no games, a principal canceled the game 40 minutes before the game was supposed to happen. Mike nor his other two coaches ever knew about it. Um, re regardless, I think there's just, um, there's so many inconsistency that the best way as we try to do with everything else is to all be under one umbrella. So, I think that's where East Mount players trying to get everybody on the same playing field, 
And it also, at the same time, this would be my vision. I think it would help the schools that don't maybe have enough numbers, which is typically Dallas and always Worcester. And East Mott players up and down, depending on the programs. But from year to year, it's some boys' teams they can't have because of the numbers. And some years, it's the girls. So I think if we all went into one Central Vermont rec committee or something like that, which East Mont Play already does, it could solve some of those issues that we have. So that's kind of. Yeah, I was going to ask if Philip, could you tell us a little bit about what East Mont Play is doing and what you see as the, the benefits of that? Um, so East, East Montpelier Rec Board, and it, the, the, the brief history is that it, like Berlin, which has a rec commission or something, was property management. And the property is beside the school. It involved new sports being played on it. Um, there's other properties around town that we are, are under our umbrella. The youth sports element came in as, as East Montpelier wanted to let go. It was very, it was very easy flow. The school wanted basically the same thing that the, the parents and the folks on the rec board were looking at. How the actual jump made, I, I don't remember. But what we do now is we we manage the fields, we manage the property, and then we run youth pro uh, three primary up until now three primary youth sports: soccer, basketball, and then we endorse. Little League Baseball. We don't actually, we have teams, we coach teams, but the program is run through Little League. We're adding something, and, and that's always been open to any kid in the district that wanted to come play, whether it's Orchard Valley student, one of your students were, were always been welcome if there was a shortage. And we've put that out there a few times. Um, the youth sports has become more of a primary uh, as far as the day-to-day -day function because there's always something going on. Um, we charge a fee. Uh, we charge a $35 fee per sport. It was lower at one time, and we have had um, ambitious plans with the property and, and the programs that have put that fee where it is. Um, I'm trying to think of the other things that set us apart. Um, there's no, there's no direct school su supervision. There's no direct school involvement, but there is a very cooperative relationship between um, the board and the administration in the school. Uh, we handle the scheduling of the games on that on the soccer field that is on the school side. So there's a there's a uh, property use agreement. We use the basketball court, same idea, property use agreement, and in that we've contributed the. Two of at least two of the basketball hoops that are in the in the gymnasium were something that we put up. Um, I think we might have had something to do with the, the scoreboard. So we we keep complementing the equipment and resources that are needed, again through the fees and through some money from the town. Um, and it's we're always flush. We're always in a black position as far as our finances. Uh, we are planning ahead more now than we have in the past as far as purchases, but we, um, we, we get through approval, final approval through the select board of the town, and we're under their liability. Thank you. They also host racking clinics for oh, their racks, I'm, which are very helpful because then they're consistent with what they're going to call at what age. So on that level, there, um, there's an, I've had an effort going for a while with soccer in particular, and the Xilingas have been very involved in the program flow there, and we're moving more and more towards a like spelled out progression. Uh, we did it with K2 this year. Um, my wife Jessica helped run that program, and we put together a, a program where the kids were progressing, and we added onto the development throughout the year. Uh, that's been done in the past, but it's being more formalized, and I hear a call from other programs for consistency across, uh, whether we ha do one program or we have a progression across that, that everybody shares, um, and it makes complete sense. Um, there's a lot of athletic success coming out of the kids from East Montpelier, um, and a lot of, we get we get enough, I, mean, I, I don't want to say a lot of, we get enough volunteer participation to make it work, 
and we don't when we don't I stand in front of the parents at the opening day and I say hey that team's running that team's running that team's running that team doesn't have a coach we'll see them as soon as you know we'll see them on the field as soon as someone steps up I never go one practice without having someone step up um, we do what else I don't do you do background checks for we do a different background check system than you guys do. We don't do the level two. We run, uh, we run names through the uh, Vermont Sex Offenders, and I believe a level one. So we don't require fingerprinting. Um, we've never had anyone else that wasn't a parent step up to be volunteer either. So um, I don't know if, if that would be handled differently if volunteers came from outside the district. Any other input or concerns that you want to? Uh, I, no, that? I I live in a district. My kids do. It's all rec based up in Morrisville. Lamar County's been rec based for a long time. Um, and then my kids went to Woolcott Elementary that had something that was done through um, their after school program. So I've lived in both worlds. I don't have my only piece is a safety piece. And I had been told as of this afternoon there weren't any background checks in East Montpelier, but. I didn't know that for sure. Where did that come from? I say that came from within the system. My board. I'm uh, Philip. I'm not going to uh, give people. It's it, we have we have a system in place so, in our. In that's our the models. only thing I want you to know as a board yeah. that you, even though you aren't, you are responsible for kids' safety. And it's your decision on what level you, if you know if that happens, how you'd like. It's not your decision once it goes to a municipal piece. The standard in Washington Central is level two background checks with anyone who's alone with kids. And I'm not saying that to stop it. I'm just letting you know pieces of information. I'm trying to be really clear here. That's so I think as this rec board is trying to like regroup within the towns, it, it would have two representatives from every town on this. That's board. agreed upon for formation of the board uh, when we went from a kind of a pool of coaches working together to a more formalized one. We went to... Two, 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 and then we had an individual working as the leader of that group or facilitating. Uh, Bill has Travis doing it more formally now. I did it for a year. Principals have done it. Um, that the principal was the preferred. Then we had someone that was sitting in the administrative position because four of the groups were, or actually at that time, three of the groups were schools. Callis was rec at one point. Um, and Callis came back to the school yeah. because of the background checks. Um, yes, yeah, so that's where I was going with that. Is I do think it's an option as if that would be something that we say, okay, that that is something we will not give up. We want level two background checks. I, I don't see that stopping a town if that would if the background checks were to be continued on as part of so Vera, I need to give you some information about VCIC. There's certain sign-offs that have to be done, and there are certain organizations, and I don't have it all committed to memory, so I'm not not just giving you some information. I know they're very strict with who has access to the Vermont. To get to a level two background check, you have to be able to go through Vermont Criminal Information Center. Yeah, I know and Dynamo it, Soccer Club does it, and they're a rec yeah. soccer in Northfield, okay. and they do the level two. So, and I, I'm not sure about. Um, I, can I ask a clarifying question yeah I'm confused are you if it's no longer in the school we answer not to the school and our reliability doesn't go to the school it goes to the town anything that happens on that soccer field for us I, I'm just, maybe you're you own the town you own the field as the town owns the field currently I'd have to go check liability with our legal team we would have to have a have the town include a include us as a self-insured through the as a co-insured through the town's policy and then so if onion river uses the spring the they have, have to the show spring. us they have insurance and they do yeah and i do i i would have to check but i'm not 100 percent sure. it used to be the town of berlin has the rec committee because they are the ones that also subsidize the swim lessons in the summertime That's that cool. half of that yeah. runs through the rec Right, but on the town budget, which it, I'm assuming would have insurance for their portion of that. Right, I'm not saying they don't. But we need, it, and I, this is all doable. I'm just trying to get you information on the table, again. So the, um, when we have someone come in and use our site, 
that's not being run by our staff. We have to have them show us their insurance with a co-insurance rider on it. It doesn't really cost them anything, but it says if something were to happen, their insurance would cover first before our insurance would. So like when Onion River comes, we ask for them to do that. They give us a letter from their, I have to ask Michelle exactly what she wants, whether it's a letter or a certificate of insurance that shows us as co-insured through their policy. So it's not that it's not doable, it's just I'm just telling you what the pieces are that are part of the puzzle. So if the town developed the piece of property over by the mall for, and put a couple ball fields in there, that removes the problem for you guys completely? It, it's, not, it's not on our property, that's right. correct. Okay. I don't see it as being a big deal. I just want to be sure that the board's aware of these issues. I mean, they aren't. this is nothing that's a deal breaker right here. It's just the pieces that we'd have to talk to the select board about that and get that done. So, Philip, is it is it just East Montpelier? Is there more than one town right now? It's East Montpelier is the only remaining rec board. Okay. Um, the town of Callis no longer wanted the liability. As it, it, correct me if I'm wrong. T town of Callis no longer wanted the liability that uh, the sports programs were bringing. So they said, "School, you've got to take it back." Yep. And because the school has their the liability system for the with the district. It had to be school based again. Um, I mean, so they're the, in the opposite situation because their fields are owned by the town. So does the school provide coverage when those students are on that field? Yes, wherever we go with a field trip, we're covering ourselves. Um, so they have a lead. I, I, there's some use agreement. I do not know the details uh, between the school and the school program. And, and well, you might know the details. I've School never program. even looked at it. Yeah, okay. So it's probably like the reverse of what I'm doing with East Montpelier is we say we're, we're going to use a basketball court, blah, 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 here's our insurance. They're probably doing it just in reverse. Um, Bill, does it matter where the program is based if we had a centralized program as far as liability? If it was based in one particular it was administrated from one particular. Doesn't area. matter where it's where the okay. where the accident happens. All right, that's what I thought. Because what happens is if it were to be someone were to sue, mm -hmm. they're going to go after a good lawyer is going to go after whoever is involved, and part of it would be the property holder. So we've got liability and in insurance, and both are doable. They're doable. Yeah, it's, it's all doable. Yeah. It's you know to what dotting i's and crossing t's. Yeah. Mm -hmm. What? No, I'm I'm. My recommendation is, well, no, I think you're going on the same line. I, I was just going to say, as much as you can remove the school from the picture, the easier it is to cooperate, in my experience, with the school. Well, I have a question in that, in that regard, too, uh, Bill. In the context of Act 46, it, will this be a moot point in a year? No, no, it, it's... It, it's it doesn't, it doesn't matter whether the governance is one way or another because you, you need to know that the school district is its own municipality and then this town is its own municipality. So the school district, the Berlin Elementary School District, will remain its own entity? No, but it doesn't, but it doesn't matter. You're your own entity from the town right it now anyway. Just, yes. It would so, be two well, merged boards. Like it, it, our it sports would be on a rec, Central Vermont rec board, per se, and then... The Act Forty Six merger would be the school. Board. Yeah, I mean, it really, it really doesn't. It really doesn't matter whether you're merged yeah. or not. You still have the same problem. But we would have one policy instead of five for five towns. One policy for one unified district. This is not a policy level. This is something to do with liability. I, I don't mean school policy. I mean insurance, insurance policy. policy. Oh, yeah, we already have one insurance policy for the whole issue. Insurance is bought centralized already. So it's just a matter of stipulating the, the wording for the certificate of insurance for this purpose. Yeah, there's yes, yeah, exactly. We all we all we bid all our insurance together and do it all together. So mm -hmm. it would be just yeah. But you're talking about they have to program to the program would have to come here with their own insurance. It's, you're not talking about well, covering the program for through Berlin, are you? No, 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 no. Right. What, what Peter was asking is is there if there was a different governance, would it matter or there was one district versus the six districts, does mm -hmm. it matter for this between a rec entity, which is under the municipality, 
and something happening at the school, and there is no difference no matter what the govern governance is. It doesn't. I was looking for a silver lining that maybe something would be simplified by <laughs> 46. No, the problem, the problem here is, I mean, it's not really a problem. It just makes the complexity because um, when you go to something that's governed, I mean, at East Montpelier, it's governed under this town. The town, even though there's a rec board, the town has the ultimate responsibility. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah. We have to we have to justify our budget and go and do our budget request to the select board. And, and any major projects like right now, we're ripping <coughs> down trees and whatnot, when it goes through the select yeah. board. Yeah. But as Vera points out, we have a rec board in Burlington. And that's how ours. That's what ours was born from. The same and basic entity that did the prime to swim take lessons. Another another activity. Yeah. We still do the swim lessons. We just have you know, sports now too. Yeah. Whereas yours is, and so tell me, Phil, what what are the advantages of the rec structure versus the school structure? My perceived advantages, and I don't know if maybe I'm, you know, I don't know all the legalities well, that Bill has to deal with, is oh, just the freedom of not being tied to the logistics of the school. Um, it, there's a there, you have programs that are in conflict with sports, you have money issues with sports. Um, you know, I don't know what the budget is at Berlin, but I know that my soccer program pays for itself and its equipment and referees. And these are goals that I'm hearing from all the other programs. We want trained referees, we want coaches that are trained. Mm -hmm. I do all that. And I do it all within a budget that is always in a positive position. So the advantage is having control over funds. Uh, the advantage for us is we have our own property, so we don't have yep. to. We can manipulate it in, in any way that the town agrees, versus having to go through whatever hoops it would take to redo a ball field here. I don't know. Um, okay, time to sell free, yeah. to the town. Freedom so and flexibility, I guess, is the two or the big ones I perceive. I have one more question in the same context. You, you mentioned uh, budget paid by fees. You said earlier. Correct. We have a. Property if, management if children are town. unable to pay the fee, is there, a, is there a means to subsidize those costs? Uh, absolutely. The, the thir in that $35 fee that we're taking in, we, we are able to take care of any scholarship that we need, and we do it without ask. We, the, you don't have to fill out a financial form. So if someone asks for a scholarship, the kid plays. If someone doesn't ask for a scholarship, I'm going to ask them, do you need one? If it, it's if there's, there's never been a kid that hasn't played at East Montpelier, and it, it's yeah, it's never been a problem. And so that's that's easy to manage. Thank you. So Peter, just to give you a little history too. So Berlin was at a point where um, a few years ago, when we had the fields redone, the soccer goals and nets were destroyed, and we went into our soccer season not having anything and no budget to purchase anything. So Craig and I had reached out to Barry Chenard at Comfort Colors in Northfield and um, he was very generous and offered to help out with buying, giving the money to buy two of the goals which we purchased from East Montpelier, buying the new nets for all four goals that are out there because 3-4 has smaller goals than the 5-6. We were able to buy six ball bags, which all contained 10 soccer balls, a set of um, cones, pennies, a game ball, and goalie gloves. So um, right now we're in that situation again where some of the bags have been kept very neat, everything's together, other bags are not. And we're in that situation where we had six there's three upstairs right now. Some haven't been returned, some have, obviously. And we're in a situation now, too, where we have very few jerseys that are left. And some of the jerseys that are up there have been up there for years. Whereas, if you have a program that, even if a kid needs a scholarship and that is provided first, you would hope after a year or two of having a rec program mm -hmm. that you would have enough money to purchase that equipment that you need. Because that's usually not one of the things that is in the budget. And I think doing the fundraising during the basketball season has been more beneficial, but we don't have the space out here to do a jamboree like East Montclair does because they have four fields that they do the jamboree on. So it's easier to host at East Montclair, mm -hmm. so they do it out there. 
also makes you eligible for different types of grants that are specific to recreation. Um, yeah, I mean, she spoke, she spoke really well to the flex of, she described about $3,000 that she would have to spend to be able to get back to four teams at par with all those balls, bags, jerseys, and updating your, updating your goals. Uh, actually, if we update all four goals, it'd be more like 4,500. So that's not, a, that's not a jump in a school budget kind of number when you have to do it. If in rec, we, well, we've got, we have the funds because we've planned ahead for that. We know what, when we have to do the nets next, and we've got funds set aside. So I appreciate all the information. I think we need to try to move along in our agenda. Do you have any recommendation or proposal going forward, Vera? Any action? Um, no action. I think it's one of those that we need to continue the conversation as far as, you know, if this is something as the Berlin board as much as it would be Middlesex and Worcester to have the same conversation as the benefits, pros, the cons, you know, issues both ways. I think it, it's one of those that's been talked about multiple years for multiple different reasons. Um, I can remember having the same conversation whether to stay as rec or um, move over. I think what the, I think the, um, the thing right now I, I see as a struggle with all the schools is the inconsistency across the board. And I, we say every time at our, all of our meetings that there's so much inconsistency from school to school, whether it's the allied arts or programs offered, foreign language, whatever. And it's the same thing with the sports. And I think if they were all being done under one unified board and one unified rec committee, there are benefits first and foremost for the kids. And that's what I see as the biggest benefit, is the benefits for the kids. Because right now for a school to have three, four, and five, six all play on one team is not beneficial to any of those kids. Nor do I think having a co-ed team is always beneficial when they're very much at different levels, at different ages. So that would be my first and foremost, is what's beneficial for the kids for each grade level. That's what it's all about. It is. Um, the only other question I did have, which was listed in your list of questions, and I never got a clarified answer. The last I knew, the AD position was a stipend position, and it was either $1,000 or $1,500. And now that we don't necessarily get a line by line in the budget, I, was, I could not find if that is still $1,000 for, for the Berlin. Stipend. Yeah. I'd have to go look at it, but I think it is $1,000. But I think it is a thousand dollars, and the same is true for the uh, SU for what Travis does to coordinate. It's a thousand dollar stipend. It has been since I've been here. It's never been changed. That's why I wasn't a hundred percent sure. So, I mean, part of that is a lot of that is goodwill <laughs> for the amount of hours. Yeah, that's a that was the same stipend ten years. Yeah. Mm -hmm. All right. Thanks for coming, Philip. Absolutely, I am. I've been available um, for this line of thinking, and I would, I would make myself available anytime I can because this has been a project of mine for ten years to find this window opening, and I, I, I think it's a really good opportunity. And I think East Montpelier's board in general can bring a lot of experience to the table. Uh, so we're there if you guys stick your hand out. To, okay. to help. Can you let us know if other schools take this up and are looking at I'm hoping that the, honestly, I'm hoping the little swell that's happening here will be picked up and interest. I'm not trying to force it on any one program. So two towns didn't come to the last meeting at U32, and I'm not sure. Travis was going, my understanding was Travis was going to reach out to make sure they had representation at the next rec. One of our first goals as a district should have, should be getting back to two two representatives from each program, so at least what we have right now can make representative decisions across, uh, and there's two from East Montpelier, one person representing two schools, and Romney, when he shows up, Doty, the principal's representative, and, and you know, I know his times, uh, that he's busy. Uh, so that would be a goal, a, a goal that I would ask you guys to set, was to help get back to that board of uh, 11 people counting Travis. Thank you for letting me. Thank you. Thank you. Thanks.
Matthew, is there anything in particular you're here for? Nothing in particular, although I haven't seen your agenda, but uh, it's okay. All right. I just, I just came because I'm interested in the conversations boards are having about education goals and stuff like that, primarily. All right. Uh, going back to our discussion agenda, item 3.1 is our budget draft number one, which can be found on page five of your packet. Yeah, I'm going to actually, and I should have done this when we went over the agenda, Chris, back and forth. I'm going to read. Talk to you a little bit all about a little bit of timeline. I was reading your minutes from when Lori was there. Okay. And I need to correct some things that Lori said sure. in the last meeting. And then I need to go, I'll go to page nine, which is the multi year budget okay. information packet. And then I'll go to the budget on page five. All right. Sounds good. Um, so, what I wanted to do was talk to you a little bit about the budget process going forward from where we are right now and the implications of Act 46 and the ruling of the State Board. Uh, Chris and I have talked about this, but I wanted to make sure, and the executive committee has talked about it, and most of the boards have, a, but I wasn't sure that Berlin, and then when I read through the minutes prepping for tonight, I was like, oh, I need to correct a couple things. So let's, you know, as you all know, the State Board has made a provisional ruling for Washington Central. As we go f forward through this, they're meeting this Thursday on the 15th, and then meeting on the 28th of November, possibly. And... I wanted to make sure that one of the things that with us figuring out what's happened with Act 46 and where we'll potentially be, I want to make sure that the budget process stays as transparent as possible and does not um, even, I, I think more transparency is needed now than less than what we've done before. So in that, pro I shouldn't say than what we've done before, but to ensure that we have that transparency. Um, I saw, Chris, you just pulled out the timeline for Act 46, and I didn't bring that with me, but I kind of have it in my head here. I'm fine. I'm fine. If I say, miss, say something, you can be my check for me, okay? Sure. Um, but in the draft articles of agreement right now, the State Board's going to discuss uh, this next Thursday, there is a provision that on November, once the State Board rules, th there, there are two different transitions that happen. There's a, trans, there's a warning that will take at least 30 days because it's a school district meeting, so like your town meeting day. That means within 30 to 40 days, a new transition board will be brought aboard. And their primary responsibility is to prepare a budget to be recommended to a new board that will be elected on town meeting day. So if we were forced to merge, that means there is not a budget vote on town meeting day and that there will be one at a later date. Because the new board is elected on town meeting. The new board is elected on town meeting, and the new board has the responsibility of presenting a budget to the new district vote electorate to vote on that budget before, ultimately before June 30th, the recommendation is before May 1st. Because if the budget were to be defeated, you'd want at least one time to be able to have a revote. Um, so with that being said, one of the things I want to make sure is that we're still in back in August when the executive committee met, we determined that the best thing to do was to develop the budgets the way we have been developing the budgets. That means by entity or by school and bring those together and not look for uh, possible savings, but just bring all those together to the transition board and bring the information to the transition board. Then the transition board would bring that information and present that information to the new board. So as a, when the, if the state board rules as they provisionally ruled, the, as a, let's say the date is November 28th, and the, the schedule, and Peter, you can take a look at it, the one copy that's there, um, is that there would be, as of that date, the responsibility for FY20, which is our next fiscal year, resides with the new board all the way in March. So anything that has to do with FY20 goes all the way to there. I still think it's good for us to bring budgets to this board. This board still has operational responsibilities to June 30th, and then probably one or two board meetings after that because you, this board needs to accept the auditor's report. Uh, in the draft articles, it says that the local boards will need to stay standing until December 31st, 2019. After that, if they're not, and we're still waiting for audit reports, they can go to the new board. Um, 
so my plan, and I've presented to the chairs and to the executive committee, and I've received favorable feedback, but I would like your feedback as well, is that we would bring, we're going to present you a budget tonight that's level service with adjustments for student needs. We, that's what you have in your packet. We'd love feedback on that. I will do the same again in December. Would like feedback. January, we won't need to, if you remember, January means get pretty compact because there usually was a town meeting day report. So there probably won't be a report in the town report if we get merged because there'll need to be a new report made of the whole entity. Um, still trying to figure that one out and I really won't have that decision for a little while. Um, so then we would be giving all that information to a transition board for whenever they see and they would take it from there. So I'm trying to gather the feedback so it all goes to the transition board, and then the transition board would take it up from there and get it to the new board. Was so realistically, we could have, we could be great with this budget you've presented tonight as a Berlin board, yeah. recommend it. Um, it gets handed to the transition board, it gets handed to the new board. New board could just go in and change it. They could. I don't foresee that happening because in Bill's mind, and I want to say it that way, in my mind, I see the transition board is made up of the clerk and the chair from each board, and then I have a feeling, but I'm not sure because I can't predict the electorate, that probably the new members on the new board will come from a lot of the members we have seated already. I can't say that that's going to happen, but my intuition is telling me that's probably what will happen. Um, I don't know what to degree and like what percentage or any of that, but I would think that a much, many of our, so you have a lot of the same people sitting there around the table throughout so I think doing the work as we go is that's what I can foresee that's that's been my assumption until recently the more I think about it I wonder if we'll have candidates out there running not against us but as people that are just totally dissatisfied with the whole business and end up with 10 new people that's a policy that's a po probably the possibility not a policy yeah, <laughs> a absolutely. possibility I, I, I've thought of that too Peter yeah, yeah I really have and it's I, really, I it's really hard to to imagine what could happen. What could happen, yeah. But I think we have to deal with what we can deal with. That's kind of, that's the pragmatic part that I've been trying to deal with. Like, what can I yeah. deal with? What can we deal with? And how can I help advise the boards and move forward and keep the system moving forward? So, yeah. But that's been my thought. So it's, it's probably not helpful to spin hypotheticals like this about <laughs> what, what might happen. But what if one, I'm just trying to imagine one town being way out of line in spending and increases as compared to the other four towns and, and how that plays so, out. So let me tell you where we are right now. So I think actually that should play into your articles of agreement and hint, hint, I would go look at Champlain Valley mm -hmm. Unified Union because they have a nice way they talk about doing budgets there and spending and not necessarily what the spending is out of alignment, but what's needed for based on students. And they have a nice policy there of mm -hmm. things that superintendent has to put in place for when they do their budgeting. And their program has been accepted. Oh yeah, they've been merged for a year, over a year now. On that line, at the, at the debt committee, I hate that term, but uh, um, I think you mentioned, somebody mentioned that we would receive um, information on CBU or. Yeah, and I haven't given it back, okay. so thank you for reminding me. Yeah, I, I gave it to the articles orders. committee, I forgot to get it to the debt committee. Great. So okay. thank you, Peter, for that reminding. The Champlain Valley School District articles to debt. Yeah. Sorry, I got a soft track there, Bill. So, um, I, what I was going to say, Chris, is as an expenditure budget right now, every school is around three percent or below. And I say around, like within like two tenths of a percent at most, above three percent. The low is East Montpelier right now; they're below two percent, and so is the SU budget is below two percent. Um, so there we've got, you know, I, I asked the principal, I said, so when looking at your level service budget, tell me if you can't do it outside of that. Now the impact on taxes is different because two of our towns are losing small schools grants, both Doty and Callis. And on top of that, Callis is losing their eligibility for title one funding. So they're going to lose quite a bit there. They actually lose more on that than they do in small schools grant because title they're the students they serve are no longer, they no longer have the percentage.
to be eligible for Title I funding like Berlin is yep. and the way Doty is. So the, their net impact on taxes is different. Um, but their overall expenditures are under that 3%. And that doesn't take into account, won't take into account any of the redistributed debt. Well, there's that, but here's the other thing. We've had some shift in students, and I don't have that finalized, but we have shifting student enrollment. So that, even if we didn't have the shift in debt, we'd have shifting assessments and costs and all that because of just student population changes. You're talking shifting debt, Chris, based on the Act 46? Yes. Right. So one budget. So those are all the, those are the, I just want to give that timeline uh, Barry, you've just been quiet, so I wanted to give you a chance if you had any questions. Oh, I'm just, it's so hard to live in the <laughs> hypothetical of what it is. Because I feel like it's all going to be a moot point in the end to have this. Regardless of what we support and put forward, it really is up to the new board, and it's it's hard to make a decision here now with what's going to yeah. happen in March and April. But I think, I believe that all three of you, and if Carl were, I'd say with him too, him as well, that I'm supporting this uh, that all four of you are influencers, at least in the town, and I know yes. I know that, and you're big supporters of education. So I think it's worth to get your feedback. Um, I'm I'm good with the budget. I I go back to our board goals and my own personal philosophy with our kids here at Berlin. That I just I would love to see the progress moving more, especially in math. And yep. how we do that and how much money we're willing to spend to do that is a question. So the executive committee asked us about but, that in yeah, November? Yeah, I was there. Yeah, that's right, you were there. You were there for us, you heard that discussion. I don't have to re repeat it then. But I should for Peter at least, and Chris yeah. has heard it before, is that the executive committee brought a pretty, uh, we brought uh, a budget that was 1.96 from the SU, and we know that the consumer price index right now is for September was 3.3 percent for the past 12 months, and that the government and uh, government and educational services is 2.9. This is all New England region. Mm -hmm. So after saying those for context pieces, which I was going to say to you as a board as well. Um, I was asked to go back and look at what needs are ha that are needed to increase student outcomes. I mean, you all just had a student outcome. We do it purposely this way, so we so you have some you can see that before you get into the budget discussions. So from that, um, the leadership team is actually working most of tomorrow on that. We're working from eight to two to answer that question for the you know what more is needed as in resources, and then. Um, you know, we're going to come back on the 20th to say that to the executive committee, but I think that will probably influence even some on the 5th of what is it that we need. Is it money? Is it time? Time is a cost. We all know that. Um, and then, um, or is it a way that we reconfigure how we look within our buildings? And I think it's going to be A, B, and C in different ways. So is this an area that we might, under ordinary circumstances, be recommending perhaps a greater expenditure for math. You might, right? whereas right now we're trying to maintain a level budget because of no going I, into Act Forty Six. I'm not saying that because of Act Forty Six. I want you to know what those costs are and are they, you know, what are they? Mm -hmm. And you know, some of them aren't cost money wise, <clears throat> but they're cost in changing the system, which sometimes takes some political, you know, it takes some education piece mm -hmm. for everybody to understand why we're making those changes. When you say changes, though, just for my own. So like say we were going to change the schedule. Like schedule, okay. Say That's we were going to change teaching assignments. Say we are going to change classroom loads. And all this is hypothetical, okay? <laughs> say we were going to change um, unified arts. Say we were going to change uh, time of the school day. You know, we have... We're in school from 9.30 to 3.30, so that's six and a half hours. We deal with a 37 and a half hour work week for teachers. Uh, we, it's actually really nice that we have it as a work week because that allows us to be flexible with teachers, more flexible, and actually meet needs. Um, so, you know, we might, staffing patterns, all that. Those are the different ones that aren't time, but are educational because, um, 
school is one of the big community grounding places. It's a rock for the community. And so when you try to change something, you have to work with people about that change. And it takes time to do that. Anything else you want to present on the budget? Not on the overall, I would say on page. I'm going to not do, I'm not going to walk through things that you can read, but I want you to tell you on page 19, there's some big, and you might remember these from years past, Peter, um, big keys that we use into building the budget. So there's like, what's one penny on the tax rate for Berlin yep. in the current configuration? What's 1% on the expense budget? We'll get this more defined because I can't, I don't really want to give you taxes right now. Lori always, when I push her in November, she's like, come on, we need to get some of these things clear before we get, we need to get into December bill. These are helpful keys though. Those are helpful keys. So I wanted to point out that page to you. And I'd like to say that you have a, I think I believe on page five, you have a 3.04 and there are some shifting student needs that are shifting some changes in paraeducators that were needed for this year. So we were able to put those into this budget. They weren't in the past budget. We were able to absorb them in the past budget. But the reason I need to tell you that these changes are a comparison of this year's budget with next year's budget. So it's not actuals. We already have that 1.6 FTE pair educator, as you can see, FY1819. We hired those this year. Mm -hmm. We're expecting more revenue because of that, but they weren't in the budget. So the budget to budget comparison is a $106,000 increase or 3.04%. And that's with healthcare in there, salaries. Um, there's an estimate in there for negotiations for that salaries. And then assessments for Washington Central at 3%. As you know, Vera, you were there at the meeting. We, were, we hadn't recalculated assessments. We will be doing that for you in December with a new distribution of students. Because last year, if you recall, all assessments now are based on the child count. A percentage of child count based on ADM. So we'll refresh that for the December budget. Okay. That's about a shorter budget presentation I've ever done. <laughs> <laughs> I'd be glad to take questions, detail, anything you want, but I'm giving you where we're at. So I'd like to bring up some things that are would also fit under the Act 46 discussion. And I know you'll have a perspective on these <laughs> that may differ from what we, I think we have a responsibility to consider as Berlin school board members as opposed to looking at the best interest of the entire district. And we might decide things in a way that are in the best interest of the district. But I think we also have to take a look at our, I'm thinking of our capital fund and our reserve fund. Uh, I'm curious as to whether you know if other boards are considering spending that before consolidation. So they're talking, they're talking plan. about it. It's the actual, can you do it? And I've had this conversation with two boards and I, and someone said, well, we'll just pay up front. And I said, well, you can do that if you'd really like to, but I don't advise it as your superintendent because whenever we have work done, you want some money held back to make sure the work has happened mm -hmm. and that it's correct. That's a good point. So I think, and I would tell you that most of the, the big ticket items that are that you would might want to do under your capital fund. And I have a report based on the closing out the construction that I need to give you, which yeah. I was going to give you under your fiscal. But it, I mean, we've had this conversation at Doty, we've had this conversation at, at Middlesex, and I'm like, you gotta not, you, you can't do the work with kids in the building. So you gotta get to a point where you don't have kids. And usually that's summertime. And What's your understanding of when time runs out on this board's ability to direct funds from its budget to be spent on something like a parking lot or a driveway? June 30th, 2019. Yep. Invoices must be in. Laurie would like me to say, because I know the process of shutting down the budget starts May 1st, that she likes to have all invoices in usually by June 1st is what the buildings get told. You know, if we know it's something coming like a field trip or something like that, we flex for that. Mm -hmm. But we really, you know, we're in shutdown mode starting May 1st and we shut down everything June 1st. Again, speaking in hypotheticals, if this board put out an RFP for the driveway and committed that money in May or whatever it was, 
even though it wouldn't happen until school was out and kids were gone. It didn't happen in June or July or August even. Um, after June 30, could the new board put a stop on, on it? Yep, yeah. they could. But I think there are ways to do things. I mean, this is what I've been trying to say to everyone. I think we're getting too nervous, might be the right word. And it's at how do we put trust into the work in which we're doing going forward? Sure. That's, it is, yeah. And I think that's difficult, given that we're being forced to do it. I think it's, it's <laughs> we're putting yeah. trust in the unknown and the unknown who's. And yeah. I think that's the hard part. I mean, if it was known for the first year that two of us would definitely be on that next board and not just going out for re-election on So that's what, that's, that's what, that's what that's I hard. think that's a discussion you should have, frankly. I, I'm just going to be really transparent with you. I think we have a lot of fear, just as you said, of the unknown. How do you make a process that says we're trusting of the work? Because here's what the principals have said to me quietly. They're like, we're rushing to do things that won't be done well. And so if we go, how do we, every year we've always had it, we've, this job, district has done a great job of, build, of saying we're trying to build capital plans, which we've been doing. We're trying to get work done to improve our buildings. We've been doing that really well over the past five to eight years across the district, some more than others. How do we ensure a system that does it thoughtfully going forward? So there's a piece, you know, and, and that has been considered by other districts when they've done merging. How do you do that? Some have just gone to the, we're going to spend every penny. Some have said, you know, we're going to find a way to do that and maybe make agreements in how that works to the best of your ability. For comparison, what does each of the schools have for a capital fund already? Um, if you gave me a minute, I would like to get my laptop up and I can look at my budgets. Yeah. Um, so maybe while Bill is doing that, we can take a look at the, um, and maybe I left my laptop at no, okay. my office. It's not sitting in here. I must have left it at my office. So I just kind of threw that out there. I don't know what Pete or Vera, what you think. No, <clears throat> about use of our capital fund or our reserve fund prior to merger. I can tell you that it's something that I think all the schools have talked about in the context of the debt committee because yeah. there are varying levels of capital funds. Um, have to go into a new tab. And okay. they all have different ideas. Whether they will, whether they won't, and what they will use it for, okay. what they would okay. like to use it for. You know what I mean? And my, I do. my thought process would be, let's do something consistent. Like, if we're all going to spend it, then let's all be, like, it's too hard if one comes with X amount in their capital fund that they're contributing now, SUY, and all the other four schools decided to spend others. Like, I think there needs to be some consistency there and some agreements of either we're all going to spend or we're all going to save it and pull it in one pot. Like, oh, I think when you have... That's one of the pieces of any equation that we come up with as a district for customizing our our consolidation plan. You know, we talk about trying to equalize budgets and account for capital funds and different tax rates and different. So at the debt meetings, do you feel like you're getting closer to a point where you guys are? I think we're still gathering information okay. and, and we have time, I believe, for two more meetings before our deadline which is not a whole lot, uh, to put together three different plans. Um, so we're trying to gather as much information as possible and taking a significant amount of Lori's time. Um, but capital uh, uh, budgets uh, have been talked about, but no decision has been reached on how we might yeah, we gave the overall assets and liabilities right. to the last We have that information, right? Yeah, but that didn't have, have just capitals. I mean, it had all the assets and liabilities. Assets and liabilities without any kind of a, appraisal or anything. You know, it's, it's the best numbers available today. 
Without an appraisal of the property or yeah. the buildings? Without a professional appraisal, which might be very different from any other numbers we have. Yep. Yeah. But if we, our thought, I think, is safe to say if we all use the same criteria, then at least we'll have relatively uh, equivalent numbers. Yeah. So when you talk about agreements, Bill, you're saying that the, the schools could agree on how to use the capital funds, how to use the reserve funds? In theory, in theory, I, I'd want to go check out, I'd have to check with our attorney when you move from one org to another, can the org say, hey, like Callis, I just looked up, has $145,000 in their capital fund. Can they designate that that amount of money is for the Callis Elementary School building? Can we make that agreement? And you might find that none of that is legally binding on a new board. Yeah, I don't know the answer to that. I go ask uh, Patty, Patricia, who works for Scott, who's starting to take over some of this work and has with other merged districts. Yep. I don't know what, yep. what happened in the bat in the pack if you can make those type of agreements right. or not. I mean, that's going to do a lot, I would think, for trust. So, <laughs> under the financial piece of the articles, it, if it's in there, the new board doesn't have to follow what is in the agreed upon articles? Like, no, I the, ar think that the articles could that, be... Um, the articles, the new board has to agree about what's in the articles themselves. Unless, they, unless there's a way to change those and the draft articles of agreement say which ones can be changed and which not, and then any new articles. Are you talking the interim board or the new board? Uh, the new board. The new board. The new board. But we've been told many times that the articles cannot, cannot deal with the debt. Right, the debt, the de assets the and debt. debt. Assets and debt, sir. So you can't a dollar amount to be spent within one school district that I don't know the answer to that if you're coming in with assets if you can say reserve assets like in East Montpelier there's a Jonathan Miller fund hmm. for uh, and if there's it specifically has been designated by the voters mm -hmm. that has to be used in that method I do not know how that works on the capital funds if they because of Originally, there was voter approval to set up these capital funds. So you see that 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 I don't know, and I haven't. As far as um, trust, if we here are talking about the possibility of, for example, a paving project that we could let out before the end of the school year, but which can't be completed until after the school year, um, then this current board would be trusting the interim board, if I'm not mistaken, well, to sign off on that. Well, I think if it was a paving project, and I could be wrong with this, but if school's out by June 20th, I believe the, the biggest, The hardest part right now is getting the contractors. They're already setting up their work. They're so busy right now. I don't know if you're seeing this with your work at because you do service, right? You don't install? No, we do install. Service. Yeah, so, I mean, what we're seeing from, the, I mean, we're going for bid right now for an elevator at U32, and we're about to go out for a boiler bid for Middlesex for next summer. Um, well, there are contractors and there are contractors. We're talking paving contractors here. They're just finishing this season. And if, I mean, all things being equal, we decided promptly uh, for to get on their list for End of June is what you're talking about. Yeah, I, I was possibly saying, like, before July first. We could get on their schedule. Um, you know, I think it's feasible. Yeah. Um, my question was beyond that was um, somebody expressed a concern about the new board changing the decision of this board, but I would be comfortable because I'm looking at the new board. <laughs> I think. Well, transition the only transition board. board. Transition board. Okay, but, uh, but come March. The, 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 on the, town the bill is going to come before March. Yeah, the other part that's yeah. there is that um, you have to, the new board has to honor all contracts, either, you know, HR, like my personal contract, yeah. or contracts that are already set in place. So here's an example. Um, Middlesex has got $144,000, thank you, Aaron, in their capital fund. They were supposed to replace their oil boiler, which they didn't do in their bid, this past summer. They got really high bids, so decided to go because they went out really late. 
So we're going out in the next month for an oil boiler replacement at Middlesex. Yep. I'm going to tell them do it during the summer. Don't do it. You know, don't try to squeeze it in. Get it done during the summer. Mm -hmm. You know. Uh, so right now, Cal has $145,000 in their capital fund. East Montpelier is $768,000. Doty has $91,000. And Middlesex has one hundred and forty-four. dollars You have, I didn't look yours up because it was here in the report. Um, you currently have $183,000, which there will be another $6,300 coming in off of interest earned through the construction project and closing out the bond. This always happens. At the end of a bond, there's money flowing one way or another. And really, that's left from the interest income. So you'll have about 190000 let's say. There's also, I didn't say in these, and I didn't look them up, but and I would, I'd rather take some time to do some research. There's a million dollars at U32 in capital. They're about to build a new track, which is going to cost that much. And they have some big other ticket items coming. Um, there's, you know, there's what's the yearly contribution out of the budget to transfer to capital. Where most of these funds have been done is, have been funded is in what's left over at the end of the year. And that's pretty common in schools. So most capital funds, the electric makes a, a capital fund and most of those are excess above what's needed for cash flow. What you always hear is the 4% carry. Forward. And, I, and you have excess money in your current budget, of you're about one hundred and eight, hundred nine thousand dollars right now over the four percent piece, which I was going to suggest you put into your capital reserves. You know, as you're looking at a driveway, I mean, the Middlesex is doing the same thing. They didn't get everything that they had wanted to do through their bond project, so they're they've got some roofs that they finished pretty much this year. They have a big gym project that needs to be done. They didn't tackle the gym the way you did. They know they need a new floor. They need new paving. They need new painting in there. They need new lighting. Yeah. You and know, I, I threw driveway out there, but we've got yeah, we've got kitchen work, we've got got kitchen work, yeah, that all that, all that stuff. So, things. I mean, if you wanted to say, hey, there are things we want to do next summer, just as we've done every. Other, and Bill Ford asked me the other day because he works for the Burlington School District, and they just passed a seventy million dollar <laughs> bond. So he's like, how full are you going to? He does. He he does only services about three or four school districts right now because he's getting consistent work and he likes to work for the people he does. You need a clerk of the work for these types of things. So I'll have his hands full there. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Thank you, Bill. Yeah. Matt, did you have something or not? Well, I just wanted to ask a question. Maybe. I think um, since we're you're talking about hypotheticals. I guess I want to throw another hypothetical out, which is we don't know who's going to be on a new board, uh, but it's at least in theory it could be two of the three Berlin board members in this room could be serving on that, that board. Um, knowing that, you know, Rumney's setting aside $140,000 for a boiler project. 65 for the boiler. 65 for the boiler, okay. Um, and it's oh. got some other things on its list. Uh, Doty's got siding work and windows, things it wants to do. I'm sure every school has certain things that are on the docket that anybody could tell a new board. You're on the new board. It's July. You're at your first meeting. What do you do? You say, well, screw their capital plans. We're just going to do whatever we want with this money and like figure out you know, from here how we go. I don't think that's really how it's going to play out. I just don't see you know, a board coming in. And even the... AOE's like default articles of agreement envision nothing really changing in the school system for at least two years in terms of grades served and buildings operated and all that kind of stuff. Um, and by the time you get two years down the line, you know, probably whatever we see right in front of us at the moment for capital projects, there's going to be all new things on those lists anyway. Um, so I just don't, when I think about it, I don't really sort of I often fail to find sort of a rationale for, for like panic or concern, I guess. Um, yeah, you can't guarantee what another group of people is going to do. You can't, but I mean, it stands to reason that it would probably play out pretty much, you know, how you've got it planned now or whatever's on your, your sort of in your pipeline. Um, that's just what I, because it's come up at Doty. We've had people, we've had board members suggest that it's our responsibility to, 
we, we levied taxes to raise money to do capital projects for which you are taxpayers to see that that happens here. Um, but I just don't I just don't see a board going in a radically different direction, you know, right off the bat or something like that. So. Thanks. Thank you. Any questions for Bill on the budget? Any comments or feedback? I would, would really like to have some, but if you don't, that's fine too. I guess I gave you my feedback, but I think that's going to come at the next yeah, the committee. Yeah, right. We have and to do some work. A follow up at our December board meeting. When do you need feedback, for example, on on the capital fund uh, or transfers into it? Well, I like this. Well, the transfers in we should we should do soon. I think. Uh, because I think that's only prudent money management to say that we're putting it in there for capital and that somewhat locks it. To me, there's somewhat of a commitment there. Um, you know, as your superintendent and whoever I, I'm serving, whether it's one board or all six boards, um, I've heard pretty loudly from the communities, keep these buildings in good shape and do it in a fiscally responsible way. Uh, I believe the money that's there, in my own belief, talking for myself, my own belief is the monies that come in at this point are really dedicated for that school. I also think um, that we can actually probably do some better money management in the future as one combined board. Because there's less of a rainy day fund. We have a high rainy day fund right now. So we're-, we're Is that a line item, rainy no, day No, it fund? is. It's called our, it's called your, when you look at the bottom of your financial report, it's called the projected ending fund balance and the target we want for the current year. I don't believe that we need 4% of the total SU budget. And that's kind of what we're holding right now across all the, the buildings. Which that was another question that came up at the last executive committee meeting. Right. What I believe is the right percentage. Right. And I, and I said to you in my response to you, well, I need to go back and work on that. Yeah. I don't know what that is right this second, but I don't believe that. When you look at the combined report that you give when we have carousel meetings, that's a pretty high line. I don't mm -hmm. think we need all that. What I want to do is go back and look at some trends in spending. I do, this kind of brings us into the next um, discussion of budget meeting, sure. planning, and the community engagement. And I do think it's, it's so important to try to inform our communities as much as possible. And I feel like over the years, as much as we try, it still dwindles down every single year to nobody attending. But I, I do think there's so many changes that are coming about that it's so important to have a couple of budget meetings set aside just to talk about budgets and even the timeline of like the Act 46 stuff and how the Act 46 stuff is gonna affect our budgets and educate people as much as we possibly can as a collective group. I mean, I don't want to go, I mean, I can go door to door and, tell, you know, hand out flyers or tell people, but I want people to be informed from a group of us that's, if they are getting the same information and not different information from going door, door to door. So I do think it's really important to have a couple of those budget meetings slash some Act 46 timeline, timelines and how that's, like where that's at. Because even the day I went to vote, I had a few people that came up and said, what's going on? And sure. I'm not on the debt committee, and nor am I on the other committee that you're on. So I, I don't, I mean, I know what I know from our big meetings, but that's about it. So I can't really answer those questions for people, like where we are at this moment. And it changes Do you think we need, frequently. do we need to do that before the, I've been kind of waiting as a superintendent just with the staff because I've had, the call, I asked the principals the other day, I said, hey, do I need to come out and do a, you weren't there actually, this was a different group, but uh, just not because, it, we were at the training last week and there were three principals, so I 
do I need to come out and do an Act 46 update now? And they said, no, wait until you know what the board rules on. Yeah, and, and I'm thinking like after it. December, like after our next regular board meeting, yeah, doing a, something. Yeah, because I, well, I was writing down. So this, I was I, thinking like somewhere December 5th through like the 15th or I was thinking December. that timeline document you just looked at, well, I have it down to one column, but yeah. what are the implications? Kind of an FAQ yeah. document that's maybe yeah. one or two pages that says here are the implications. And by then you'll have more consistent numbers for the yeah. budget. So that's just my thought on it. I feel like that's a huge part that is on us to take care of. So you're not talking so much as ramping up for town meeting by way of explanation. You're talking about when we arrive at a budget, kind of Both. informational Act 46 budget forum. I think in this moment I'm saying both, mm -hmm. but I think we'll know more once we know where we are after that timeline of December, or um, November 14th? 14th, it's now 15th or 20th. They just moved it the other day to one day later. I think it's important for people to know though that they might not have, most likely won't have a school budget on town meeting day to vote on. Like it will be later on. This is what we're looking at for our town, but you know, that's gonna change as other towns, what they do. Yeah, that's a, that's a significant change or potentially right. significant and I think change, yeah. Having those meetings where people can come and, you know, hear about what the changes that are coming down the pipeline. The more we prepare our town, the better off we will be. Great. That's a difficult time of year to get anybody together, I'm afraid. I do, I agree with that, but I think at the same time, knowing that there's so many changes, I think people will, they might. will come. Because it's a hot topic. Especially knowing Barry City and Barry Town just voted theirs down again. So mm -hmm. I think it's so important for us to make sure that people are as can, educated as we can. Definitely worth doing. Provide them information. Trust me, I don't want to be at any more meetings in December than I have to be, <laughs> but I feel like it's my, our role as the school board to do as much as we can. But you think that the timing on that is going to be December? Wait until the ruling's out. I do. I, uh, I mean, people can start requesting absentee ballots like right after the town report is printed, and that's January. And I so think we've already missed. And here's the thing: I don't know if we'll be in the town report. That's one of the questions I still have. Right. Yeah. So I think we have to get something out that says where we're at, because if you open the town report and don't see a school section that you're used to seeing. Right. Like, what's going on is going to be the oh, question. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So there I mean, needs to be some sort here. of letter and, and as understanding. As they can vote that day, they're voting right. to get it done. They just want it done off their list. <laughs> so I, there's at least a letter in there or something. But, I, I mean, that's what I've been trying to think about. Like, what is the town report? That's a question I still have. And what's Half of it's a school budget. <laughs> school report. So that would be a, a really key topic for that kind of a meeting mm -hmm. is just to let people know if, if in fact there won't be a, a, a school budget in the in the town report why and what we have in lieu of that and we might have to do that again in April or uh, March. February yeah. oh yeah I think it's a couple of times I think later. it's a, yeah. a couple of times yeah. yeah so we have an agenda item down here for budget meetings planning did we want to try to set a few dates or is it too early at, at this point so your your next meeting is I just want to go over the calendar here yep on the traditional way that we're set not because all we have is you just see you just see December 10th mm -hmm. but let me uh, get up my calendar so in January the normal the regular scheduled meeting would be January 14th and then usually February is a carousel but that might be you need another one on the 11th yes I'm, I think so yeah you know so not that there can't be others I'm just trying to give some what the normal routine is Normally, it would be a carousel on the 20th. Uh, but, you know, the transition board is that you can look at the dates there. I don't even remember without looking at that document, Chris. But, you know, the transition board gets spun up somewhere. I I would, if I were going to be a, a betting person, I would bet the state board's not going to rule until the 28th. But I'm, I don't have any inside knowledge which way they're going to go.
So right now we'll hold the January 14th and February 11th for community forums for the budget. And we what days did you say? January 14th, Is it January 14th February 11th? and February 11th? There are regular scheduled yeah. meetings here. All right. And Bill, just in terms of general feedback, I, I fine with this draft. Level service right around 3%. So far, so good. Okay. <laughs> Knowing that we might want to have some additional focus on what it might take to improve math scores. Yep. I know Aaron's been thinking about it mm -hmm. and some things, but. Anything else on the budget? All right, so we'll move on to item 3.2, board member vacancy update. Um, I had one person reach out and express interest, and I followed up, and that person did not get back to me after that. So um, as far as I know, we don't have any candidates for the vacancy. I can put out another um, front porch forum post, uh, just reminding folks that there's a, there is a vacancy and encouraging someone to step up and do it, but I don't know what kind of luck we'll have with that. Item 3.3, the SU Board Goal uh, 3 Community Engagement and the Communications Plan Strategy. I think I'm trying to remember at the last meeting, I think we tabled that item. Um, I think the executive committee was going to take that up at some point, but maybe that's dropped down on our priority list. It wasn't taken up at the last executive committee meeting, was Not it? Not when I was there, but I actually thought the way we left our last meeting when we had a carousel meeting at U32 is that we would, I thought there was going to be a subcommittee of some kind, and maybe it was the executive committee for, um, the communications piece, piece so that everybody was getting, again, this, the same consistent information. But I'm not sure that that came up at the executive committee. I think the status of that is it there at the last executive committee meeting, but I can't remember. The last time I remember is October, which we were kind of okay. saying, hey, things are on hold right now. Let's which is look at the work we, level we have. When we adopted the goal, we kind of said, well, who's responsible? We said the board's. You know, so nobody's really in charge of driving this forward in like a coherent way. And what I can remember from the last time the executive committee touched on it was that, you know, we have so much other stuff going on right now, we probably can't, you know, make this a priority to adopt something consistent, you know, system-wide. Um, maybe that was our October 24th night or, yeah. Yeah, uh, the meeting before, before that, the, the, week, the week before that. Yeah. yeah. Okay. So does anyone here on this board have a desire to, to work on a strategy at this point in time, um, either specific to the budget or Act 46 or more in general? I just, I am, well, any suggestions, any discussion? We'll leave it tabled for the moment if there's not. So then we'll move on to item 3.4, um, warranty work update. Yeah, before we, I'm going to let Aaron talk to most of this because he's been looking at things, but I just wanted to give you a couple things from the contract. There are two different things talked about in the contract. There's the warranty, which says we as the owners will go back to the contractor within the first year or two, I can't remember which one it is, for any items that need to be adjusted in the building. The other thing is, what is the general contractor, What? how far are they to, re how long do they have to repair defects? And that's a second part of the contract. We, your attorney that does construction wrote our contract for us, and the general contractor is on the hook for six years for any defects that happen under construction. That, uh -huh. sh that, sh that came as a result of the construction. Not of use, but because they weren't installed correctly. So say these lights stopped working, we could go back to them and say, you need to fix this. And they need to do that. 
that always the the contractors always like to talk about warranty, but we actually put a defect clause in. We don't have to go back to them to fix it, but we can. And they're on if it was because it was done wrong during construction. So, and items like a roof would have a longer warranty. And you would have they a actually that's a, that's a different piece. You're exactly right, Peter. We have a warranty that just came in, and Aaron got it through email for how long the this roof was warrantied. I forget the terms. I haven't had to deal with it. I hope I never do. <laughs> but it's good to have that warranty if you go back to those folks. And those you get separate, things like roofs, you get separate warranties because of what water can do to the building. And we ask for that under the construction. So I don't know what's left still on the punch list. Do you want to yeah, go through I that, Aaron? Yeah, I talked to Bill directly, Bill Ford. Um, the renovation project that was done before I came um, is, is clearly done. Um, uh, the roof project is complete. That's been signed off. Um, the heat, what could, a couple of outstanding things that were still lingering, outstanding, was the, uh, the heat register in the main office, which was actually done today. Um, and then there's a bank of lights in the kind of the primary wing that um, since, since the summer, since I started, was, has been out. And... Um, um, I don't think it was noticed right away until uh, I think after school started when I was like, how come these lights are, this bank is always out. <laughs> so when we looked into it, um, TM, TMI yep. is going to come back, it's coming back. Not lighting. TMI is so the mechanical. Yeah. Okay, no, no, not not TMI, sorry. Um, but our elect electrician. The electrician, that was part of that. We'll, we'll yeah, that, that, that did it, it's going to come in and remedy that. So that's the only thing that um, is is left. Hmm. Everything else has been has been done. And Wayne's been really good to work with, and we call him and ask him for something, and they get down here and mm -hmm. take care of it. Mm -hmm. The flooring might be the thing that we might be thinking of because we've seen some of our floor, but they came back and did some of that work this summer. That was my question. Yeah. In October yeah. was there were some flooring spots, and I had asked if it was done over the summer, but Lori was. Sure. Right. And those are things that we're, you know, we're dealing because we've had some issues with the floor mm -hmm. and the flooring subcontractor, you know, they come yeah. back and take care of uh, Lynn's room and the, what is now the reading intervention room was done before school started. Um, I think it'll be obviously something that we see spring and summer, what happens to those tiles in, in every room to see what might be happening, what might continue to happen that's not good. and. We can fix it. So the three big things that I've been taught through different building renovations are roofs, floors, controls. Are the things you're tracking down for a little while. And you hope you never get to the roof. Mm -hmm. That's why I really liked what we did for this roof, which is just put it right over, glue yeah. it down. <sighs> right. We had talked at, at one time uh, um, about trying to document some of the savings from the renovation. We did last year when we were talking about just the energy savings, yeah. and then we've turned that into your transfer into the capital fund of thirty thousand dollars. Yeah, that's good. I just think it's good to keep that in mind and maybe yeah. remind the taxpayers as to mm -hmm. what benefits we have gotten from the renovation. Um, and you said there were. What was it, 6300 or something like that? Mm -hmm. So that was the interest earned, and we that never was budgeted for it, so we just transferred that into your capital fund. So is there anything left on the bond? Any it's done. It's closed money, out. Money is spent down you to the last You signed the year. last piece <laughs> in there tonight. <laughs> All right. Because it has to be spent by December. We're doing the last piece. All right. Any other questions on the warranty work? Very good. We'll move on to 3.5, which is Act 46. Uh, maybe, Peter, if you could give a quick update on the work of the debt committee. You've already done some of that, and I can give a quick update on the articles committee, although I missed the last meeting. I, I did read the minutes today. Uh, okay, we, um, we discussed our charge again at the most recent meeting um, last week. Um, and it's clearly to develop three options for sharing of assets. 
in, in hopes that those could be entered into an agreement as, as an amendment. Amendments are permitted. Um, and <clears throat> we're working with, with information on, on assets and liabilities for each school. Um, and I personally think we're spending a lot of time talking about, you know, what if, well, we have to pay more and we have to pay less, and we all recognize that. I think that's a given, and that's probably why we're having the conversation, but um, we, I think we recognize at our last meeting that we have to look at the numbers that we have available to us and any, any others that we're able to, to gather that are information that we can cite and, and stand behind um, and develop these three options. Um, and we will be meeting um, this week. I believe it's the 19th if it hadn't gone yeah. out by 4.30 this afternoon. When I talked to Krista, I know okay. it was either the 19th or 20th is what she said. She goes, which one do you like? I said, I like the 19th. And um, the following week, and then 12.5 I have as the WCSU board decision so we would have to give them the three options by prior to that date. Does that sound right? Um, I think it's you know reporting back to the board. I would say mm -hmm. that's what you were asked to do by the fifth is to bring three by options. The, if I remember the twenty four meeting the twenty fourth right, by the by the by fifth. The fifth. Um, so uh, th there is a, a printout that came from. WCSU central office with assets and liabilities that we've been working from um, for every school. Uh, my capital fund line doesn't agree with the numbers that you cited tonight, but this is from that's the from eighth. That's from G it's also that's from uh, it was given to you on the eighth, but those are all the fund balances as of June 30, 2017, so the end of last fiscal year. Okay, and yours are more current. Mine are more current. Mine were taken off the latest reports given to boards. Um, and I think there are as many questions at the committee level uh, on uh, values of deferred maintenance items uh, as they are in values of capital fund. The capital fund is, is what it is for each school. Uh, we can determine the value for that. Uh, but deferred maintenance is more subjective. Um, we have things like paving that we, I would consider deferred maintenance, um, that we could conceivably put a value on. We could put a guesstimate on it. We probably have some numbers from your earlier conversations in the, from the project. Uh, and, and the other schools, likewise, for boilers and siding and whatever, whatever, uh, which may be factored into one of these or all of these equations. Um, so on that list, when it's assets, do you have a dollar amount? I know they haven't been assessed as far as a right. true assessment, but what is the assessed number that is on Berlin for the building and land? So Berlin is a little bit of a, it has not been reassessed by the town and it hasn't been done through our audit yet. It's just not there yet because of the renovations that have been here. And it's not separated land and building. It's just total value. value. Right. So far, it's all together, right? We have a, a, an insurance replacement value. And this is one of those values I spoke about earlier that, you know, if we use that value consistently across all the schools, we have a, a relative comparison. Um, and that shows as uh, 7.2 million, 7,191,583. 7 um, and that's for replayed like for insurance purposes it's everything building. contents building right. right but it's building only not actual land it's not the land right so right. when Berlin did their town-wide reassessment in 2008 the school wasn't done at that point in 2008 so we haven't received information from the town offices yet Berlin and Middlesex are the two town offices that haven't sent in their assessor values are you thinking that they might be available, but we haven't received well, them? We haven't received them. They, we were told they only work on Wednesdays, and That's it's true. taking a couple of weeks to get it. So we could use a little help, maybe, in making sure we get that information. Okay. Well, that would be something I could do. 
All you have to do is ask for the assessor's card and send us the copy of it. Which the whole town was reassessed in 2008, so it should be. I mean, I realize it's still 10 years old, but it's still something right. of a lot. That's what we're trying to do is get all the cards. I mean, that was part of the project. Let's get all the yeah everything that's owned by within the supervisory union entities and get all the cards for everything. And I, we talked earlier about uh, Champlain Valley or yep. Chittenden Southeast or whatever it is. Um, that information would be is going to be valuable to us. No, I'm glad you reminded me, Peter. Yeah. I'll make sure I made a checklist that tomorrow we just send out. I, I have it right in my email. I know exactly because that apparently is. is a viable model. Well, they looked at budgets and they also looked at they had some districts that had a lot of deferred maintenance and some that had just been renovated. Yeah. Which is kind of what we're up against. So it's it's a puzzle, but that's where we are. So in the end, now that you guys have something to go by, when you're taking the assets and the liabilities, do you feel like we're all pretty equal across the board? Because, I mean, other schools that maybe have deferred maintenance have a, some larger fund balances. Do you feel like they're no, somewhat close or they way? I don't think there would, I don't think... I think it's going to be very difficult to equalize. There are some suggested formulas out there to to try to do that, um, and I I think there are probably as many opinions as there are people on this <laughs> committee, um, and and I think that's probably why we were asked for three different scenarios. So I, I think it's almost impossible to to equalize. And probably that's why the the, the board, state board, is saying you know everything goes in the pot. And, uh, but because of you know recent bonds and, and these bonds extend out over 17 years, I think the uh, longest one. Yeah, yours is the longest to go. It has three payments have been paid as the end of this year. Uh, that that is another moving moving part. So. We're going to try to come up with something, and I don't envy the, the WCSU board when they have to try to try to plug that in somewhere. But I think it's worth trying to do. I really do. So, and you know, it could be moved because it could be the the the, uh, the board of education may say we don't care not willing to entertain this amendment. So you're talking about amendments to the article, Articles of Agreement? Of consolidation. And I thought that was very clearly shut down already. It did. In the draft articles, it says that Article 5, the debt cannot be changed. So we could come to some kind of agreement, but it would be a, an agreement among the schools. It's not, it's not an article. It's not legally binding. Right. See, this is the, the thing is you have to pass the... Um, muster of what is conforms with statute. Mm -hmm. But at least I, I think it, at least this serves to give us an idea of the assets and liabilities, which I think is important yeah. for the towns to understand. Well, I think if nothing else, it will help us in explaining it to, to the voters. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Okay. On the articles, Committee and Bill or, or Matthew can correct me if I get any of this wrong I, because I wasn't at the last one. It was on election day, so I, I wasn't able to go. Election night, I should say. Um, the committee has been looking at the default articles of agreement. The committee ranked them in order of um, easiest to deal with, to most difficult to deal with. And then at the last meeting, it looks like uh, they all started going through some of those articles of agreement to get a, at least a draft and try to knock off some of the some of the easier articles to hand to the transition board. Yep. Is that where it'll go next? Um, and so I don't know, Bill, would you mind giving a, maybe a quick summary of I, the work from the last meeting? Yeah, I mean, we started with those easiest ones, so some of them like uh, what are the towns that are part of I mean, that was one of the easy ones. What are the schools, that are, school yeah. districts that are part of it? And, um, and we, I think, got, 
seven or eight of it, because there's some subparts of each. So there's 13 articles, but there's some subparts. So I want to say out of about 20, we did seven, okay. seven or eight, and uh, went pretty quickly. And we, I think we stopped right when it was going to start. Okay, you know, there were ones that would take like three or four minutes. Holly could put in the notes what the suggested changes were, and they're, they're more fill-in-the-blank yeah. type articles. I think we're just starting to get to the ones that are going to take a little more discussion. And there were some, some questions about to what extent certain articles could be amended, and I think you got a response from... Um, from Donna Russo Donna Savage, Savage, where the, the agency interpreted that, and that was sent out to the committee members. Okay. And to the timelines and what's... And we're meeting again tomorrow night. Yes. Any questions? Anything else? I think you got it. Okay. Oh, you had asked, the board had asked about property transfer. Yes. Because of what you had heard Barry had done. I just wanted to let you know, I talked to John Pandolfo. It took him three years to separate the land <laughs> from, to the town, to give it back to the town. And it wasn't so much the willingness of the select board or the willingness of the school board, it was the time it took to go through all the attorneys and land transfers and surveying and all of that. I don't imagine it would take us three years. I think that sounds a little long even in my mind, but I don't think it's something that's done in three months. I know some other, other towns are considering it and I'm just reaching out to try to get some more information also just to see what's involved and what the timelines would look like. I mean, I know it's not a short process. Yeah, I mean, you got, it, the first thing is just getting a title search, which usually when you go to sell a house, it's what, four weeks for a title search? Yeah, it's usually a while. And that's one step of many in there. I haven't even thought of what all the steps are. It's not that I'm, if you need more time, we, I'd have to research some more with one of our attorneys. Theoretically, a title search should not be an issue here because the land was donated to the school for school purposes and hasn't changed hands since then. In theory, I, when I, theory and practical when it comes to these things are, can be the same or sometimes not. Any questions? No. Discussion. Mm -hmm. um, I think I think as we have um, our town forums, I do think that question should, is going to come up. Definitely will come up. Um, and I don't want to speak for Carl, but I think getting his input because I think he's the one that brought it up at our last board meeting. Um, he did, and we and we have had contacts from the mall developer, visionary, whatever you want to call him, um, has reached out to me a couple of times to inquire about coming to speak to the board about it. Uh, they are interested in some of the property, perhaps a land swap um, for some of the some of the land bordering the mall property. Um, and again, just you know, spinning out hypotheticals. If <laughs> if in the future the the mall developers want to buy some of that land, um, and it belongs to the district, not to the town anymore, you know, we can trust. We can um, imagine that that benefit will endure to the town of Berlin, but it really is to the district at that point. Uh, so I think we still have a responsibility to take a look at that. I do. And I think that question will come up from the town people to whether it's an option or not and explain whatever the timeline might be or what that would look like with doing that. Even. Yeah. If it didn't happen during this board, how, how to move forward that could be something that happens not even with the transitional board, but the newly formed yeah. board. Yeah. So I don't want to put more work on 
on Bill on this. I don't know if you have any easy way to obtain what those what those steps look like and what a timeline would, would look like. But if not, um, I've got a couple of feelers out with people who I think will be able to answer those questions. Um, what the steps involved would be, you know, what what the time would time frame would have to be. Um, so we can have a better sense of what's involved, even if that's just to be able to tell the Berlin voters that this is something that would take a while um, and might not be feasible. I do have a question about the mall developer. My understanding is they can't continue with their project until they have the right-of-way land swapped, agreed upon. Like, if that doesn't go through, they no longer have... They're not within their right of way with the development project they have projected to do there. Am I correct? I don't. I don't know that for sure. Okay. But I, I could invite the um, someone from that group to come and talk to us. I'm not sure that we want to bring another egg into the basket until we figure yeah, out the out other pieces. Yep, I can ask. Um, them about that, but I, it just makes it very different if they cannot do that project without some kind of a. They need an yeah. additional right of way involving school property. Yeah, I, I'm, that's my understanding. Is with what they have planned right now, what they need to swap land isn't necessarily to build on, but it's part of the right of way that they would need. Mm -hmm. But that, it's more of a question. I'm not 100 percent sure. Yeah, I can I can reach out to them and see what they're willing to come and talk to us about in a in a public forum. I don't know if they'll want to or not. <laughs> um, but if they are willing, we can see. What their what their thinking is right now, just to have that information. Do they have a local rep at this point? They, they do. Yeah. yeah. So, so to answer your question that you had before, um, I can't remember which partner Scott Cameron's it is, but I would get to that partner who deals in real estate because we've used yep. him before, mm -hmm. and just say, "Tell me the steps, and what would that be?" Because you're going to want to know what does the municipal government need to have as right. well. Right. Right. That's the problem is you're getting to, in a private transfer, it's a lot faster than a public mm -hmm. transfer. Yeah. I didn't, I mean, this was a two minute conversation with John Pandolfo. I said, just right. tell me how long. Right. This was last Friday, we were having lunch yep. together. I said, tell me how long. He goes, it took us three years. And he said, it was just, he said, it was getting the public boards together because there's different places where there's sign offs. Okay. Just as you can think about Bond, when we've yeah. done the yeah. building project here. And he said it took us three years. Yeah. And, and I don't know to what extent Barry would be, you know, the specifics would be different from what we're No, I don't either. Right. I don't either. And, and, um, Has anybody had the conversation with a select board member about the town retaining that property? Like, has that conversation even happened? Uh, and I will tell you at the Middlesex meeting last week, um, the Middlesex, a Middlesex board member, I don't want to say the board because I want to make sure to. I only heard it from one person. Yeah. Express interest about talking about community access as being parts of an additional article, okay. which I would say, for for me sitting in the chairman right now, to deny community access to the right. school buildings is not a good, is not a smart move to make. Um, I can't imagine someone sitting in my chair and doing that, but. <laughs> because they're you want your community and your schools. Yeah. Someone was concerned that they might have limited access. To yeah, well, that, because it might school. become become a because it's, and it, because it's one big district. I said, I I would support you in that. I mean, I think you want to say you want the community using your facilities, yeah, just as long as we do it in a safe and appropriate use. way. Let's do it. Right. I mean. Right. So, I do have a question, quick question. It's kind of off the subject, but I'll make it quick and short. So if somebody came with a preschooler that was just preschool age but not in our preschool program and wanted to come in and be in the library during the day, they have access to come into the library with an adult with them at this point. Is that correct? It's never come up, but I would say that it wouldn't be any different than if people wanted to come and use the playground during the day. I would typically say no. I mean. Um, I don't know what the intent of this library was at, at the onset, um, but I wouldn't I wouldn't be comfortable just people milling around and, and using the, the library during school time, just as I wouldn't have people wandering around out back during 
recess, but um, the intent for this library is to be used whenever by the community, whenever during the school day. Um, but I'd be hesitant to, to be honest. I mean, we have people, we have kids here, you know, and yeah. if you don't know who's coming in, you might think, well, it's, it's, it's parent with a preschooler, it sounds very innocent, but you don't know what that person's gonna do. You know, you, you don't know what they're gonna hear or, or, or um, anything, it just, it's tricky. <laughs> for me, it's a for me, library, it's not a public library. For me, it gets into the place of uh, pu pupil privacy. Um, you know, it's the piece of the kids have their right to their privacy and how they're being educated. And one of the things that's hard to do in small communities is when students have certain needs, it's trying to keep that protected for kids. And that tends to open it up. Um, it's a delicate balance. It's a balance of, you know, parents and volunteers in the building. It's, it's all of that. I mean, it's, it's unique having an open area like this. Um, comes with its challenges, of course, but... Uh, so, some, schools, some schools have their school library is their public library for mm -hmm. their town. Mm -hmm. And so they've actually had to make sure that when it's the public library, there aren't kids in there. Um, I live in a town that has that, so there are hours for adults outside of the school day for the adults to access the library. And there's a separate entrance that sometimes it gets closed off during the day. And the same would go for like using the gym. It's like, well, you know, I'll come with my kids during the day that are, you know, uh, younger than or pre-K age and use the gym. It just gets a little bit... <laughs> Well, plus this is the learning center, right? I mean, it's not just the library, it's the learning center, so there are activities and classes in here as well. Mm -hmm. Would it be any different than allowing a teacher or a, a, a parent with their kid to go, you know, into a classroom whenever they want yeah. to? I mean, this is a classroom yep. in a sense. Um, people would might be uncomfortable, I don't know. Well, if you can get a, a, a quick summary from a lawyer who specializes in that, uh, I think that would help us. So I appreciate that, Bill. And hope we don't come under Act 250 for any reason. Uh, yeah, well, that too. Subdevelopments it's probably would. Minor subdivision, one yeah. lot. And I will reach out to the mall developer rep who um, contacts me every once in a while. Um, to see if he's willing to come and talk to us and what the status of their intent, intentions might be at this point in time. Would that be a legitimate, um, you mentioned a concern, but you might have a concern, they might have a concern about public forum. Is that a, an executive committee topic? Uh, no, not unless you were in contract negotiations, yeah, I believe. Not unless we were negotiating a real estate deal. Not quite there yet. Yeah. Then we could go into executive session for that. Um, the last item that I have under Act 46 is the Act 46 lawsuit that we voted to join a couple of meetings back. And what they're asking from me is to sign off on a letter of engagement for the group to, in anticipation of possible litigation. Um, I think I described to you at one of our previous meetings that there was a gathering of potential plaintiffs for the Act 46 lawsuit. It's a group of attorneys who are acting pro bono as well as um, some being paid, but they're being paid from a fund and donations. Uh, so I guess the important things to point out here are that there's nothing um, obligating us to stay in the lawsuit and there's nothing that would require any payment from us to be a part of this lawsuit and uh, so they're asking board chairs to sign off on this letter of engagement um, other boards have uh, voted to join the lawsuit and then the board chairs have signed on right after that apparently um, and I just want to make sure that that's still the understanding of the board members here tonight that we agreed to, to join this lawsuit and that you're okay with me um, signing on as board chair to do that. And would we be notified if if the equation changed and, and charges would be forthcoming? That would be another agreement? I would I would say so. There the this 
letter of engagement says there will be no charges um, to the board. I would move that we accept that, or that we authorize Chris to sign for us. Okay, is there a second? I will second it. And just to make sure you've read through that, Chris, yes. or you feel comfortable signing it, no charges to us, I, um, and yes. there's nothing else that's a red flag for you. No, it's very um, flexible. There's no real obligation on our part. We can withdraw at any time. Uh, this doesn't say anything about um, no individual school board or select board is asked to guarantee that any part of these bills get paid. We're asking that a plaintiffs and their supporters do their best to make contributions to the defense fund, um, and all payment comes out of that defense fund. So I, I stand with the second in the motion. I would just suggest that we bring it back up at our December meeting when Carl is here. So if we decide at that point to withdraw, we can. But sure. I do feel like he's part of our board now that it would be nice if he was a continued part of that decision instead of just the three of us. Bill, do you know of any legal problems, anything we should be aware of in signing on to this? I have stayed away from this, so I can't advise you in any way. Understood. I don't believe it's my role to advise you on this. Very good. All right, so I'll send that back in. Oh, the motion was made and seconded. Um, any further discussion? Just my other comment. <laughs> Let's bring it back up we'll that December, so if we choose to withdraw at that point. Okay. Those in favor of the motion, signify by saying aye. Aye. Those opposed, no. And the ayes have it, and the motion carries. Um, Anything else on Act 46? All right, 4.0 reports to the board um, administration. That's on page 20 of our packet. Okay. Um, my principal's report, but there's a few things I wanted to talk about in that report. Um, <clears throat> hopefully you had a chance to look at it. Uh, I wanted to mention first um, that one of the things that I've been doing with the staff here is something called collective commitments. And these are really um, a list of, of values that we'll hold each other to. Um, these are things that we worked on together towards the beginning of this year um, that, we'll, that we hold ourselves accountable for. And doing this work together it's just really, it's a really powerful thing when you, when you experience it, um, where everybody has some voice and uh, just collaboratively coming together to uh, come up with a set of, of values and things that we commit to. So a lot of the things that, I won't read the whole list, but um, things like communicate, collaborate, role modeling, growing and changing, accepting responsibility for all students, um, embracing the whole child approach, um, modeling perseverance, taking risks, uh, being honest, open-minded, being profession professional and flexible. Uh, these kinds of things that we seek in, in each other, uh, but also hold each other accountable for. Uh, so I just wanted to share these, this list with you, just so you can see uh, some of the things that, as a staff, we, we talked about um, and that we feel strongly as we move forward in our work together. Um, I think it's gonna be pretty powerful to keep coming back to those, those commitments. Uh, jump in at any time with questions. One of the things that we had recently here at, this, at Berlin is a, a Vermont Feeds and Farmer School press event. Um, we had a lot of folks come from uh, different agencies and, and uh, different organizations, and uh, we all gathered in the, the garden area um, and went through a number of different uh, um, uh, celebrations and just things about our school garden and about farm to school and uh, Channel 5 News did come and do a, a bit of a story for us and uh, um, there's some things out there on Facebook that were are really positive highlighting a lot of the great things that we do here with with our garden and just how kids get involved um, and uh, some of the educational pieces behind it so really good stuff and we were happy to have hosted this this event out of any school in Vermont, we were the ones that they wanted to come to, so that was really great. 
A couple other things further down my report, just a couple of celebrations. Um, some of you might know this, but Kim Farone, who is our math teacher and interventionist, or math coach and, and interventionist, was nominated for the 2018 Presidential Award for Excellence in Mathematics and Science Teaching. So she was chosen, there were, there were two folks that were chosen from Vermont, and um, she was rec recognized recently at a, a, a math conference. Um, so I think we're still waiting to hear if she'll go to the national level, but it's pretty cool that uh, mm -hmm. she's recognized for nice. the work that she does here. Um, you know, we continue to do a lot of work around our our positive behavior support. You know, we have a lot of things that that I hopefully are communicated strongly to to everybody about uh, some of the celebrations that we that we do, some of the recognitions. Um, one of the things that we do here at at Berlin is something called Community Bobcats, and students that are recognized for going above and beyond uh, in ways that serve the greater good. Um, we 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 share those recognitions school wide. Uh, students get a, a a button or a, a pin, um, and then I contact parents that they that their child received a community bobcat recognition. Um, just how proud we are of them for for stepping up and, and, and going above and beyond. So we really have a lot of kids that uh, obviously are are uh, recognized for this. Um, so just wanted to share a little bit more about some of the things that we do here. Um, been having parent-teacher conferences these last couple weeks. One of the things that I've asked teachers is to report to me on how many parents actually attend. And uh, I don't have everybody's uh, attendance yet. There are still some evening conferences that will probably happen this week. So for the next the next board meeting, I'll, I'll share that with you on uh, our percentage of attendance. And, uh, and even in the spring, do the, do, do the same to see what uh, what the involvement for that looks like. Um, a couple of other events that are coming up that I just wanted to, to note. We have our Harvest Dinner this week, which is an annual lunch event where parents can come and uh, have a wonderful meal with the whole school. Um, looking forward to that this week. At the end of the month, we are actually hosting a, a, a benefit for Julia Chase. Um, it's a, a bingo benefit. So what we're gonna do is, this is all school school in, initiated. Um, it's going to be uh, $5 per, per card uh, for a chance to win some prizes. We'll have refreshments and uh, staff um, are going to be helping run this uh, event for, yes. for the Chase family. So I um, hope to see folks there. Come play some bingo. That's on the 30th. A um, couple other cool things. So we initiated this year a Berlin school clothing apparel <laughs> line, if you will, and uh, with PTNA's help, um, any any money that's raised to offset, you know, that that is um, through the through after the purchase of the um, um, the clothing will go to PTNA. Um, there's a there's a link on our webpage. I have a link here in the report, and uh, there's some really really great items that that uh, you know, families can 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 get for their. The kids or themselves or even if there's community members out there that want something that just says Berlin on it uh, it'd be really cool to Peter maybe a scarf right or a headband yeah. just yeah. Yeah. Nice, yeah. nice stuff on there yeah. I'll send them to Mike and see you at the, a at good the next selection of, of different kinds of things uh -huh. you know, I actually got a that golf shirt for my dad so I you know a little bit extra that you might want to do for the family for <laughs> Christmas, for Christmas time and um are they soccer scars like the soccer? You have for the soccer team like they. Have. <coughs> I think that's big good MLS enough. and World Cup teams. Kind of, eh, it's kind of it's kind of like, like that. Well, spectator scar. That looks like it. That looks like one. Yeah. 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 There we go. Like <laughs> 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 yeah. So that's really cool. Um, you know, in terms of uh, just boosting community or school spirit, well, and, and community spirit, uh, it's just a great way to to show show our colors and, and show our school name on on clothing. So. So we're doing this for the month of November. The orders will come in, and then you know we'll do it back up in the in the spring. Um, in terms of uh, just a couple of maintenance things, we had some some trees that were removed this fall. Uh, we had a, a gentleman come in that uh, I guess has been been doing this here for a while that we've been consulting with, and just noticed some some trees that were um, definitely needing removal. Um, some that were a safety issue, but some that were just definitely dying and needed removal. So I think there were six that we. Uh, that we removed. Um, 
another thing that has come up recently is is our refrigeration unit in the kitchen. Um, we've had repairs over the last few years, and uh, just thinking that it might be time to think about some of the bigger um, cooling units in in the refrigerator for the you know the walk-in. Um, obviously, not replacing the whole shell and the whole casing, but just the refrigeration machine, you know, uh, machinery parts. Um, so I'll keep you guys updated on that. Um, the big one, obviously, in terms of maintenance, the driveway is something that I definitely support <laughs> if we were to, <laughs> to you know, move forward with that. Uh, Chuck's doing his best to patch the holes with patch. Um, and, you know, one thing that I, I don't know if this is something I mentioned before, but um, at my previous school, the town was able to get a, a wastewater grant. I don't know if I mentioned this, but uh, uh, to help um, with water flow in the school parking lot, driveway parking lot, and uh, um, it allowed us to have to repave most of the, the parking lot through this grant, which you know addressed grates and some other drainage kinds of things. Mm -hmm. um, might be something to look into, considering we have a bit of a wet spot that is out as you're coming in that where the driveway kind of dips down. It seems to be kind of marshy through there. So um, I'd be curious to see if we might be able to get or do something through some sort of um, grant because of that issue. It seems to be a direct correlation with, with water um, pooling there. So um, might be something to, to think about. We also have the wetland out beyond the actual parking lot. Right, right. right. Which my understanding is we can't touch that driveway, that parking lot because of the wetlands, but I don't, that's what, that's what everybody tells me. It's been on previous budgets uh, yeah. for, for paving, but I think you can, it's just a matter of how you, what it takes to do it. Yeah, there's so many square feet. I was actually just in this conversation this morning at U32. There's a certain amount of square footage that you have impervious on your land, and then you get to different uh, stormwater runoff regulation. And at U32, they're at it. Uh, it's gotten smaller in the past couple of years, mm -hmm. the number of square feet, and so you have to treat on site your waste, your stormwater runoff, mm -hmm. which usually just means a settling pond. But yeah. and then just the last thing, it's not in my report, but just uh, kind of thinking about some of the budget discussion um, we've been having, and obviously, you know, really taking the time to get a sense of how things operate here, you know, in just a few months. Um, uh, as I learn and absorb more about the workings of the school, you know, looking at, at, at uh, uh, previous budgets, um, seeing just the structure of, of, of things when it comes right down to even schedules and, you know, who does what, who's licensed to, to do what. Um, and we, we, we've definitely been, been, been talking about math as a, an area of need. Um, so even though we only have draft one, you know, I definitely have some ideas for, for how we can tackle this, this math uh, instructional um, problem that we have here. Um, uh, so that's a big area. And as we look at budgets for the future, uh, just I have some ideas. <laughs> and I uh, look forward to sharing that with you at some point as well. Um, some other things in regards to um, the budget that I've, I've gathered from folks is, uh, you know, some things as we, as we talk about not only academic needs, but um, uh, needs around trauma um, and you know, looking at all aspects of, of taking care of kids. Um, programs around social emotional learning is something that um, I think is also needed. I'm sure we'll have some maybe discussions at the, at the admin level at some point as well, but um, there's some things in that area that I think we could we could strengthen here at, at Berlin. Um, and, uh, you know, other kinds of things that uh, are more curriculum based around science. You know, I have a bit of a science background in my educational career, so I do support the teaching of science pretty strongly. Um, and then we have some outdated things. Uh, we've done some scavenging in the attic, and there's definitely some old stuff up there that's no longer useful. Um, some that is, but as we've working to incorporate the, uh, the new science standards. Um, teachers are saying, I need certain science materials and we just don't have it. So um, 
if I were to advocate for any bigger areas, those would be ones that uh, are running through my mind as I get to know how things are working around here. So, um, so I don't know if you have any questions for my report or just anything else about what's been going on here at school. I'd like to know what kind of pie you use. <laughs> mm. uh, it'll probably just be whipped cream. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Yeah, the, uh, you know, in regards to these uh, uh, recognitions that we have, um, uh, the principal challenges I think the kids really like. And the next one's going to be a pie, pies in the face. So <laughs> we will, actually, it's next, uh, next, next, next week? Tuesday. Um, we'll pick some random kids to <laughs> get me in the face with the pie. So More power really, to you. Yeah. <laughs> so. All right. Lots of good stuff there, Aaron. Thank you. Any questions? I have a question uh, on whether we will have an opportunity or want to take an opportunity to implement some of Aaron's budget suggestions. Math in particular for our next um, our next budget, our next proposed budget. No, we will. Aaron and I were talking about it. this is a list that I've heard from I heard from him in the past week and I said, Well we're bringing a level service this time. When right. we come in December we'll have price tags for those pieces that he just talked about. So I asked him tonight to come and tell you the pieces. Del deliberately we haven't costed them out yet. But we wanted to hear back your feedback on this and then we'll bring those pieces and, and what does that cost? So you'll get that paper Excellent. in December. Very good. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, finance report? So on page 23, uh, I pointed this out earlier, but uh, there really hasn't been any change. Things are moving along the way they uh, pretty much plan to. Um, you are, at, you know, your, the total fund balance is 248000 almost 249000 7%. That's about 109,000 over the 4% target. Um, I would like to ask that, and, and I think it's right for December to put some of that into the capital fund, if not all, uh, and that, that we might put that on the action agenda for the okay. next meeting. Uh, your capital, I gave you the quick piece on construction when we were going through earlier, so I'm giving you a very short, I'd be glad to talk anything, I'm, don't take my brevity as, not wanting to talk about it, but you know, we're closing down the construction and we'll have your capital fund. It, while it's at almost 184,000, there'll be another 6,300 going in that from the interest earned off the bond project. Okay, any questions for Bill on the finance report? The executive committee? Oh, um, for the portion I was there, um, Bill had proposed the budget draft one, which was at the 1.96%. The conversation came up about um, having addressed, addressed one of our goals um, as a WCSU board with adding another math coach within the district and how that would look within each school. Um, and the other conversation was brought up about what is the appropriate fund balance, which Bill already kind of talked about that, and, and working towards what is that right number as looking, gathering the information that's needed to provide us with what that number is, or what that percentage is. And that's really all I had time that was basically the meeting. To meet with. Yeah. Right. So it was a, it's under 2%, I think. Um, it was a level service budget that was brought to us. So okay. I didn't hear any other questions or comments come up from other members. So it was pretty clear, pretty cut and dry. Thank you. Is there any update from the policy committee? Policy committee didn't meet, and they're okay. not meeting until December. And the School Quality Committee, is that you, Vera, as well? We meet next week. This Thursday. This Thursday. All right. And negotiations? 
Uh, that's fair as well. We met. How many are you on? <laughs> uh, we met. So I've actually gone to three, two of the meetings. We've had three. The last one, um, I actually went, but had something come up, so I had to leave before I actually went inside. <laughs> so I missed the one that was on the 8th, right. which was last week. Um, and that was just board members coming up with a list of common issues. issues. Yeah. Which I'm assuming I just got my packet. So you I'm just got your sure. packet. That's not the actual issue list issue that's list. on top. Chani wrote one in the form of questions. There are eight or ten issues, and issues have been exchanged between the boards and the association. And there's a lot of meetings coming up in January, February. So I'll keep you posted. 26 is the first negotiation meeting. I'll be the 26th. All right. Thank you. Um, we can move on to our action agenda. Uh, 5.1 is appoint a board member. We do not have anyone to appoint, so we'll skip over that one. 5.2 was appoint a vice chair. I think we had forgotten about that at our last meeting that Eric Chase, I believe, was the vice chair. And so, looking for volunteers. Peter, is that something you'd be willing to? In, in the event that I cannot fulfill my duties as chair, you'd be willing to? This is as distinct from the clerk. Oh, so you're right. the clerk. Right. You're I'm the clerk. Beer right. is the clerk. Right. You're the, are you a treasurer? No, we don't have a treasurer. We don't have a, se just a secretary. <laughs> no. no. I'm the clerk. clerk is all so that. I think right. So, so the, 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 my thought was that the chair and the clerk would become the temporary members under the new configuration. That is the... So yeah. the chair is just to stand in if you are not available. That's right. Yeah, I can do it. So I'll make a motion for Peter to be vice chair. Okay, I'll second. You'll have to second. <laughs> <laughs> that was any discussion? <laughs> he said all he has to say on that. <laughs> Those in favor signify by saying aye. 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 I suppose no, and the ayes have it, and congratulations on your appointment. Uh, approved board orders. I can give you the amount if you'd like, because there's Certainly. two figures on this, so I added them together. $107,563.47. I had 73. Did I write it down wrong? It was seventy nine thousand nine thirty six ninety seven yep. plus twenty seven thousand six thirty six and fifty cents. Yeah, it's seventy three. Right? Yes, you're right. 73. 73. Yes. Gary, would you make a motion? Yes, I'll make a motion for the 107,573.47. I'll second it. Okay. Any discussion? Those in favor, signify by saying aye. 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 Those opposed, no. And we've approved the board orders. For Thank you for checking my math. <laughs> Thank you. I'm not the math guy for sure. Usually I am, but not uh, Future agenda items. So, uh, Bill, you've asked me to put capital, potential capital fund transfer yep. on there. Um, if possible, I will have a mall property update. Um, potentially someone will come and talk to us, potentially not. Of course, we'll have the budget items. Talk now. <laughs> budget on there. Um, I think we should have an item to discuss communications around Act 46 and the budget. At our next meeting on December fifth, and determine what December we'll put out there. Oh, I, oh, you mean at the carousel meeting? I was thinking the tenth, but oh, I apologize. I think that's the just an SU meeting. Fifth is the SU meeting, so yeah. maybe December tenth. Right, December tenth is our our local board meeting. Um, any other future agenda items? I don't think this has to be put on, like any time. Soon, but um, I think feedback maybe, and Bill probably would have this as to 
what conversations other board boards are having about moving the sports to a rec committee versus reading in school. Because I think it was one of those, either we all move or we all stay in status quo is probably the feeling, I guess. Yeah. So maybe just an update on that as to what conversations other boards are having. Sure. Okay. I, I really don't know of any. Okay. Any other conversations? That's right. I know where Callis feels because they just did this a year or two ago. Moved it back. Moved it back. Okay. But I'm not saying that they still do either. I just, that's all I know. Yeah. If you have any updates. If I hear any, I'll let you know. Okay. Yeah. And of course, we'll have this, our standing Act 46 um, where we can discuss, I think, um, property. Bill will have some more information. Hopefully for us at the next meeting. Any other agenda items? I, I wanted to say on the school versus rec, it may take someone like Phil to, to, to I, I don't know how much he's been involved, but he said 10 years, so it may take him going school to school to see what level of interest there is today and to, to come back to us. I don't, I don't know if that's gonna happen any other way. I'm not sure. I'm not I sure. Have no idea. I, I, I'll just be I'm, really brutally honest. I haven't put any energy into it. And, no, and you shouldn't. And, and you, you I'm not seeing you do that. Any, and I shouldn't. I don't see you telling me to do that. No, I'm just letting no, you know. No, I'm just asking if you I, hear if I hear stuff, I'll let you know. But I'm not really. And I'm not. As I said at the beginning, I'm not wed one way or the other. I just tried to point out areas that right. you need to be advised of as a board. And I wasn't trying to do that to dissuade. I you think let's get an update. If there is any other conversations that's happening, that's all I'm asking of Phil. Mm -hmm. And at that point, if that will either progress us to make a, another future agenda item to have more conversation about it or not. Okay. Good. Um, any board communication that the board feels should be going out between now and our next meeting on December 10th? I mean, I'll put a notice out there again for. Um, seeking a board member to fill the vacancy, but other than that, I wasn't planning on putting anything out before then. Um, I think we need to put something out after our December meeting about the Act 46 stuff, okay. but again, that's a month away. Yes. All right, we'll have an agenda item on there for that. Yep. Good. Anything else? All right, then. Thank you, everybody. Thank you all. We'll turn at 7.50.